Chapter 10. One little sailor boy left all alone. He went and hanged himself, and then there were none. I hear a voice. No, voices. They're coming from upstairs. understand how can you be here how could you get into my room so easily I've always had a duplicate set of keys Miss Claythorne as a former and actually the current owner of this house you own this house I have for several years I saw to it that Emily Brent died two weeks ago I took her place for the weekend my finest performance I think Worthy of the Oscar, the Academy always refused me. But the bee stings! Hurt like hell and did nothing for my complexion. But Emily Brent was allergic, not me. It's my apiary after all. Who are you? My name is Gabrielle Steele. You've seen my posters in the screening room. The actress? Some scandal in Hollywood. Scandal? Well, I guess if you call trying to kill your leading man a scandal, yes it was. My final picture, last of the Borgias, something happened. Lillian Borgia, the character I portrayed, one day on the set, suddenly she... she was inside my head. She wormed her way in. That's the only way I can think to explain it. Telling me to do things. Showing me how. They called it a breakdown. I now like to think of it as a meeting of two minds. But why this elaborate plot? Why kill all these people? Why? Wargrave, of course. He was absolutely right. He was the central character in our little drama. The Edward Seaton trial? Yes. Edward Seaton. My love. My life. We met some years ago when I first came to London to star in a play in the West End. Then, after the incident in Hollywood, I came back to England to rest. They wanted me to rest. Edward and I fell in love. I cannot describe to you the depth of our love. You wouldn't understand. I've seen how you flirted with Lombard and Narricot, playing them off against one another. Did I? I was frightened and, and confused. I suppose that's as good an explanation as any. I was never confused. Edward was an innocent man railroaded by that venomous old judge simply to prove a point. That it was his courtroom, his law. Three days Edward suffered. He couldn't bear the shame or what it would do to me. He killed himself for me. I wanted Wargrave to suffer those three days, watching as death approached, powerless to prevent it. But why the rest of us? I met Miss Brent at a resort soon after I arrived in England. Hateful old hag. I think I caught her qualities quite nicely. I heard how she had punished Beatrice Taylor for her so-called sin. Drove her to take her own life, just as Wargrave had driven Edward to suicide. I wanted to extend Wargrave's torture for three excruciating days. What better way than to make him watch others die? Crimes committed under his very nose. Deaths he was helpless to prevent. How his ego must have been scraped raw. You researched? Found us all? Others who had apparently escaped justice like Miss Brent. With the help of my attorney, Archibald Morris. How could he agree to help with such a mad plan? Mad? Madmen kill for no reason, no sense of justice at all. I only killed those who deserved to die. And Morris was a perfect little lawyer, asking no questions as long as the money was good. He'd been responsible for a few miscarriages of justice on his own, so killing him was not a serious moral dilemma. Then the stage was set. We arrived on my island, and the play began. The trickiest part was goading Armstrong into getting so drunk he wouldn't notice the imperceptible pulse that remained after I took the curare. A few bee stings and then a liberal application of Bellman's universal embrocation to complete the effect. It causes a nasty rash. He saw what he expected to see, a severe allergic reaction that can only result in death. You killed the judge twice? Hardly. 
The first time was some fool scheme he cooked up on his own with Armstrong, so he could pretend to be dead and catch Mr. Owen. I admit stealing Miss Brent's grey yarn and fashioning a wig from it was a nice touch. So angry. I couldn't think who had done it or why. I thought braining him with his own law book would be enough to fit the Chancery rhyme. If you shoot me, you'll be arrested. Patrick will catch you. I'll deal with Mr. Narricot presently. Then I'll take poison. This ring I wear is a prop from the Borgia movie. Came in very handy this weekend. First for Marston, then Ethel, then my own Curari. And now, here we are. Once I'm dead, you can hang yourself and complete the rhyme. And if I refuse to hang myself? My dear, what do you think will happen to you if you're the only person found alive on an island with ten dead bodies? If you don't hang yourself, the law most certainly will. Patrick! I can't risk grabbing for the gun. She'd surely get a shot off before I reached her. You killed her, Maricot. The tickets are all booked. Suitcases are in the boot of the taxi. We're all set. Thanks, Pat. Don't thank me. If I'd been able to save at least one person on Shipwreck Island, they could have corroborated Bloor's confession. You'd be cleared and we wouldn't be running to Australia. Are you sure you have to go? Fred, there are ten bodies on that island waiting to be discovered. Mr. Owen was right. The law would see that the last little sailor boy hangs. hang yourself, the law most certainly will. Patrick! I'm sorry I wasn't in time to save Lombard. If only I'd gotten to Shiprock sooner. He was responsible for the deaths of 21 men, Patrick. I don't know what I ever saw in him. Will you listen to me now? If you insist. Hugo and Cyril went down to the beach early that day. By the time I arrived, Cyril was out too far. It was too late to reach him. Hugo claimed he had been distracted, helping a passerby with directions. I knew how it would look. I thought I loved him. So I told the coroner's inquest that it was I who had been on the beach. Later, when I was cleared, Hugo was jubilant, yet his feelings for me seemed to have vanished. I realized I had served my purpose. How would it have looked if the boy who stood between him and a fortune died while in his charge? He didn't think he'd done anything wrong. That was the most frightening part. Cyril wanted to swim out to the rocks. All Hugo did was let him. Mr. Owen invited the wrong guest. It should have been Hugo out there. No. I should have told the police the truth in the first place. I will now. I have no more right to subvert justice than Mr. Owen. Where is your brother? Plymouth, turning himself in. Thanks to your statement, he's sure to be exonerated. And us? Are you still confused? No, I'm certain now. What about you? Well, there's another ending to that ten little sailor boys rhyme. One little sailor boy left all alone. He got married, and then there were none.
You killed her, Maricot. Thanks for writing that statement, Lombard. I mean, Morley. My pleasure. Law's confession should easily exonerate your brother. I owe you one. After saving my life? We're not even, old man. I still owe you. You remember to look for Charles Morley in the London Directory if you ever need anything. As far as I'm concerned, you're a better man in a tight spot than Lombard ever was. So long. This little sailor boy isn't going near the sea for a long time to come. Thank you, Charles. That's right. If you ever need a break from Naricott, Charles Morley is in the London Directory. Treat her right, Naricott. As far as I'm concerned, you're a better man in a tight spot than Phil ever was. This little sailor boy isn't going near the sea for a long time to come. Will you listen to me now? If you insist. Hugo and Cyril went down to the beach early that day. By the time I arrived, Cyril was out too far. It was too late to reach him. Hugo claimed he had been distracted, helping a passerby with directions. I knew how it would look. I thought I loved him. So I told the coroner's inquest that it was I who had been on the beach. Later, when I was cleared, Hugo was jubilant, yet his feelings for me seemed to have vanished. I realized I had served my purpose. How would it have looked if the boy who stood between him and a fortune died while in his charge? He didn't think he'd done anything wrong. That was the most frightening part. Cyril wanted to swim out to the rocks. All Hugo did was let him. Mr. Owen invited the wrong guest. It should have been Hugo out there. No. I should have told the police the truth in the first place. I will now. I have no more right to subvert justice than Mr. Owen. Where is your brother? Plymouth, turning himself in. Thanks to your and Lombard, uh, Morley's statements, he's sure to be exonerated. And us? Are you still confused? No. I'm certain now. What about you? Well, there's another ending to that ten little sailor boys rhyme. One little sailor boy left all alone. He got married, and then there were none.